Fortnite. Thanks to the two gift subs, Chris, and the two elbows, and the resub, or the gift sub, Raw Dog, and the Prime Ocean. Watch the Glicko Morinaga incident, Japan's greatest unsolved mystery. This? This video is sponsored by Hunt a Killer, the perfect subscription box for fans of true crime, ARGs, or mystery solving in general. So given all that's going on in the world right now, you probably you, need a break from it all. I find my favorite way to do so is by spending time away from both the internet and any outside distractions in general. Sounds and if awful. you haven't already tried it, I'd like to wholeheartedly recommend Hunt a Killer for a fun, analog, apocalypse-free- It is cool though. Each box is- while these are obviously what the brand is most known for, especially overseas, what you might not know is that Glico was once entwined in one of Japan's most harrowing mysteries. One that left parents across the country petrified. Uh -oh. For tonight's unsolved case, we explore the Glico Morinaga case and its perpetrator, the monster with 21. That's a cool cases. title, I'm in. Izaki Glico, or better known as just Glico, is a confectionery company founded nearly 100 years ago in Osaka, Japan. By 1984, the company was in a transitional period in terms of leadership. Just two years prior, the company's founder would step down, only to be replaced by his son, a then 42-year-old man by the name of Katsuhisa Izaki. The relatively new CEO had a lot on his plate between raising his young family and continuing his father's legacy, but nothing could have prepared him for the night of March 18th, 1984, or the subsequent nightmare that would last nearly a year and a half after that. Mm. At approximately 9 p.m., two armed intruders broke into the Izaki residence while Katsuhisa bathed. The two men first happened upon Mrs. Izaki and one of the couple's three children. This is not what I was they expecting were both at all bound. here. Meanwhile, Katsuhisa, hearing the commotion, tried to remain unnoticed in the nearby bathroom with his two other children, but his efforts were ultimately in vain. The bathroom was stormed, the CEO captured, and just like that, he and his assailants were gone. Katsuhisa's family soon managed to escape and call police, but by that point, there was little the authorities could do but wait. A ransom request was made the very next morning, with the unidentified assailants asking for the equivalent of $4.3 million, along with 220 pounds of gold. Damn! A staggering amount for anyone, but one that what would ultimately fuck? never have to be paid. Just three days later, Katsuhisa managed to escape completely unharmed, revealing to both police and the public that he'd been held in a warehouse in nearby Ibaraki City, not far from his own company's headquarters. What Puzzlingly the fuck? enough, the CEO also claimed that he managed to finally escape because he, for some reason, had been left unmonitored. For now, the nightmare seemed over, but regardless, so was it like the public was horrified at the news. Stunt or like what? Such corporate attacks were something that seemingly never happened in Japan, and to Thanks many, it seemed like something that one, just Gordon. couldn't. Little did they know, however, the that Omega. this was really only the beginning of the madness, not just for Glico, but really for all of Japan. Almost a month after the taking of Katsuhisa Izaki, more bizarre events began to unfold for Glico. On April 10th, a number of vehicles outside the company HQ were inexplicably set on fire in a suspected <laughs> arson case. What the fuck is going Just on with Glico? A week later, Jesus. a container for hydrochloric acid was located in one of Glico's buildings, and as if that wasn't bad enough, it came with a note, solidifying the fact that these were the same people behind the kidnapping. Another month would pass, then yeah, I've seen that channel yet exponentially. In May of 1984, both Glico and local Osaka media received letters claiming that cyanide-laced packs of the company's candy Fuck. would be placed on store shelves. The letters signed by a person or group choosing Damn, to this is like the actual Zodiac the killer. Like, he must have places. fled the States and then went the here to torment the chocolate was guy. Taken from the works of mystery writer Glico and the Ogawa, Chocolate Factory. Specifically, a character known as the Monster or Fiend with 20 faces. 
It goes without saying that what happened next here was mass panic, and of course for good reason. Glico quickly pulled an estimated $21 million worth of product from store shelves across Japan, and as a result suffered a major financial blow with sales for that month ultimately dropping by half. Hundreds Thanks of workers some milk. were even laid off. It's now, Arisaka. despite all the damage, however, yeah, no poison pills were actually found. Meanwhile, investigators were scrambling to crack the case, but the so-called monster with 21 faces was slippery and they knew it. As this was all going on, the letters did not stop. Many that were sent to the media were addressed directly to Japanese police, who the monster described as stupid and incompetent. Oh, hey, that's too, hey, 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 hey. let's not be rude. What the fuck? Frustrated with police, they're doing their best. They even gave out hints, claiming that their getaway vehicle was gray and that they'd entered Glico's factory via the front gate in order to plant the container filled with acid, which they that's gotta be embarrassing. was originally street garbage. The letters themselves Imagine being so incompetent at your job that the criminals you're trying to catch are just openly giving you hints to make it more fun for them because you can't figure it out on your own. solid clues as to the monster's identity, aside from the fact that they seemed local based on the dialect that was used. There did, however, appear to be one possible break in the case after Glico's products had been recalled. Oh. This man was spotted on CCTV, seemingly placing something onto a store shelf. We got him! It is a bit difficult to make out, but the man here is wearing a business suit and glasses, along with a Tokyo Yomiuri Giants baseball cap. Oh, I actually thought that day, was a New York Mr. Yankees Mangi cap for a second, I'm not gonna lie. ...footage associated with this case, but whoever is depicted in it, the so-called videotaped man, has never been identified or even formally connected to the person or group who calls themselves the monster with 21 faces. On June 26, at the height of all the chaos and confusion, something even more bizarre took place. Oh god. Another letter had turned up, but this time, but this time it was a love letter. that the monster was done with Glico. The note addressed to the people of Japan said, The president of Glico has already gone around with his head hanging down long enough. We would like to forgive him. Japan has gotten terribly hot and humid, so when our work is done... Yeah, maybe I'll check that one out Europe, next, Raiden. Geneva, Paris, London, we'll be in one of those places. Let's bring Pocky, the traveler's friend. Delicious Glico products. We're eating them too. See you in January of next year. Keep in mind, this came out of nowhere after months of harassment from the group, and it even came without any money being exchanged. This, of course, would seem ultimately Yeah, they haven't made a single fucking dime from this shit. If ...not for the fact that the monster really hadn't stopped at all. In fact, it had already started targeting other brands, including one Marudai food company, with much the same tactics it had already used with Glico. Once again, ransom was demanded in exchange for peace, and unlike Glico, Marudai was ready to comply. Oh no! with a catch. On June 28th, just two days after the Why comply? They clearly just gave up last time. With Glico, Marudai was set to deliver its payment. Instead of sending over a company employee like requested, however, an undercover police officer was tasked with the job. While on the train to the specified drop location, the undercover cop picked up on a man that seemed to be following him. Said man was described as having a larger build, short hair, glasses, and most notably, eyes said to resemble those of a fox. The what? undercover cop was in So you sent the cop that was high. A white flag, the signal to drop the money. But since that flag never appeared, the cop continued on the route until its eventual end in Kyoto. He was only there long enough to hop on the next available train back to Osaka, and sure enough, the fox-eyed man boarded the exact same train. This time, the detective decided to instead disembark at Takatsuki, the middle point between Osaka and Kyoto, Kyoto, at which point McDonald. the fox-eyed man disembarked as well yep, and then boarded a train Kaisen, back to Kyoto yet again. Now the cop was the one following him, but the fox-eyed man managed to slip away. Following this incident, more <gasps> chaos would continue with other food companies like Fujia and House Foods God getting damn, sucked Meadow, into the massive the blackmailing scheme. Out of Where'd all that come of these from? Thank you, Meadow. one company in particular Jesus, would be the target huge of 50 gifties, the man. worst attack of this whole case, God damn, Morinaga, thank you. the other half of the Glico Morinaga case. 
In early October of 1984, the monster with 21 faces would strike again, this time sending a letter to the media addressed directly to mothers across Japan. And needless to say, what was said in the letter was extremely alarming. Much like with the earlier Glico incident in May, mass panic set in and products were recalled, only this time the monster wasn't bluffing. Several packs of Morinaga products were found with additional labels on them reading, Danger Contains Poison, signed The Monster with 21 Faces. And sure enough, these candies did indeed test positive for poison. In response, a oh, staff 40,000 Japanese police but they, officers they kind of set to watch over get rid of the surprise by saying that. In the hopes of catching one of the culprits in the act, maybe even preventing the worst from ever even taking place. This massive deployment, however, much like all of the other police efforts, ultimately resulted in nothing, and the Japanese public would close 1984 in fear. By Valentine's Day of 1985, more laced products had been uncovered, and it became clear that the monster was not letting up. Is it tier Meanwhile, one broken however, game? on the seemingly more positive side of things, around this time, Maybe police had finally zeroed in on a prime suspect, a man by the name of yeah, Manabu good, no, Miyazaki, who was identified following the January release of the composite sketch of the fox-eyed man from the train. This was really the first bit of actual progress Thanks in this almost year-long case, and it seemed promising. The man, by his own admission, claimed to be an outlaw with ties to local Yakuza, and on top of it all, he even looked like the fox-eyed man. But much like everything else in this case, this too led nowhere as Miyazaki denied the allegations and even had alibis that seemed to prove his innocence. His name was ultimately cleared and everyone moved on, or at least tried to. In August of 1985, things were still at a standstill, and the Japanese public were furious with law enforcement's perceived Appreciate incompetence. Appreciate it, Giggle. Thank you. And the yeah, GTR pressure was always too fun. much for one man in particular who had worked on the case, Superintendent Shoji Yamamoto, who, tragically out of shame, set himself on fire and would ultimately pass away. What? The monster, meanwhile, had been watching- What? This is like literally an anime plot. The fucking detective was so ashamed he couldn't catch the guy that he lit himself on fucking fire? This is probably what he looked like when he was burning alive, too, just so fucking stoic about it. Like, yeah, I'm burning alive, what is it? What of it? Huh, pussy? My god! What?! Bro, like, over here, the, the fucking lead detective on a case probably thinks about it ten minutes out of his day. And meanwhile, this guy was so consumed by it and so disappointed he couldn't crack it, he lit himself on fucking fire. Oh my god. That is nuts. All of this and reappeared several days later. But unbeknownst to the Japanese people at the time, this would be the end. No career Yamamoto died like a man, so we decided to give our condolences. We decided to forget about torturing food-making companies. If anyone blackmails any of the food-making companies, it's not us, but someone copying us. We are bad guys. That means we've got more to do other than bullying companies. <laughs> kind of the a lame note, not gonna lie, kind of lame. ...on their word and did not strike again. Just like that, it was all over. But even so, people were still left with no answers, no real reason Wait, for why what? all this- so, this is fucking crazy. So the guy lit himself on fire, and that was such a profound statement that the criminals just stopped. So this guy, like, he must have seen seen the strings that attached everything. He must have cracked the fucking code. By lighting himself on fire, he solved the case, but he lit himself on fire because he couldn't solve it. So the act of the self-immolation ultimately solved the case. This is crazy. And there, man, what a what a story. And the criminals also had so much honor that they respected him so much that they just quit. Wow. This had even happened or who was behind it? Who was the fox-eyed man? And was he the same person spotted placing a tier one to a store white shelf? Male Were these two men book, actually book not involved at all? Over the duration of the Glico Morinaga case, Endless amounts of theories emerged, citing everything from a disgruntled ex-employee all the way to Japanese communist groups. 
but the monster's true motivations are still unknown to this day. If you think about everything that happened, it almost comes off like the monster with 21 faces didn't actually want to hurt anyone or even make money for that matter. Why place labels on tainted goods? Why not actually collect on the money? Why leave the CEO unmonitored which allowed for yeah. his escape? That we don't know, but what we do know is that whoever the monster is or was, they really had a bone to pick with the authorities, and one might argue that most of their statements were made specifically to outline the incompetence of Japanese police. Yeah, they did a great job of that. Lasts into the modern day. As mentioned earlier, it's highly likely that the monster took his name from the fiend with 20 faces, and it's not just the name that gives it away. The Fiend is a master of disguise, someone who can blend in in plain sight, who's also known for laughing in the face of police. He's the type of criminal that normal cops just aren't good enough to catch on their own without the help of a top detective. In the end, we're never going to know what the monster really wanted. Was it to make a point to society or to play out his very own detective fantasy in real life? The answers remain unclear, but what's troubling to think about is that the monster with 21 faces could still be alive today, and, and much like the fiend, and the pixel. monster remains unseen. So if you, if you made it this far, I just want to thank you. That was great, but what an un- like, I, I can't help but feel like it's all wasted. So like, the guy, who, they're the team behind the monster with 21 condoms, like, they did something crazy. Like, they did something nuts. And no one will ever know who it was. So those, that group, or that maybe one person, they can never fucking brag about it. They can never be like, I'm a genius. Like, this guy probably sits at the dinner table with his family or his friends. He's like, yeah, I'm fucking smart as shit. And then he can never prove it. Because he can't just be like, yeah, I'm the monster with 21 faces or whatever. Such a waste. You did something nuts and no one will ever know. Except you. You yourself are the only one that will know. Shame. Thanks to, uh, thanks to the bits, Himiko, and Succulent, and the Risa Beardy Boy, and Cowbot. Oh, maybe that's what it was, succulent. Thanks to the Prime Deadfish. Yeah, I know it's Yu-Gi-Oh! Season Zero. That's sweet. Thank you, Nash. And tell her I said thanks. Was it really you, Chainsaw Man? I believe it. Thanks to Risa Belijah. Thanks to the Prime Hazard. I don't know about that laser. Now I'm deep into this rabbit hole. Maybe after, though. What are some other good ones like this? Well, actually, let me check this channel. So I actually I'm don't know if I've ever watched the Rainbot. What's their biggest one? Or what's her biggest one? Looking at Poppy. Blank Soup. Um, creepy Twitter account. Yeah. YouTuber turned murderer? Mr. Anime? Is this the guy that want that wanted to fuck uh, Ember from Danny Phantom? Thank you, Tier One Tachigami, and the Tier One so not so baked and Resub Cyclops. No, there's multiple people like that. Jesus. Do you guys remember that guy who I just mentioned? There was a YouTuber in the Danny Phantom community who was so obsessed with Ember from Danny Phantom, he, he was convinced that he was one day going to fuck Ember and Ember really wanted to fuck him. And he got really fed up at work one day, so he went in and just started shooting. And then he killed himself because he said when he died he was going to finally be with Ember. It was fucking nuts. Yeah, no, he didn't kill anyone except himself. If I remember correctly, the the people that he attacked survived. So the only person he killed was himself. 
Oh, did he kill people? You know, let me just look it up before I just completely give out wrong information. I think this was his name, Randy Stair. Nope. Yeah. Looks like he killed three people. But yeah, he called himself fucking Andrew Blaze. God, yeah, this story was fucked. Jesus. Thanks to the resub, Ablekist. Yeah, we watched an expo last time. Is it tier one the guy that I don't know who Mr. Anime is, but that's what I thought the story was. And if I haven't thought about this story in a long time. What a fucking wild sad event. Mr. Anime was one of the first and biggest anime YouTubers. He killed his whole family. What? Hold on. Um, I don't know. That, that seems a little heavy. I don't know if that's something I'd want to watch. Like, at least with the Glico Morinaga thing, no one was injured. Well, except for the guy who lit himself on fire out of shame for not being able to catch, catch them. Okay, I'm too interested by the story. Yeah, I'm going to check it out. I'm sure they don't show anything. A YouTuber on the rise driven to murder, an entire family gunned down in cold blood and a sinister plot to take the lives of at least 70 more. What? On today's episode of Morbid Reality, we document the rise and fall of Trey Sessler, better known by the internet as Mr. Anime. Trey Eric Sessler was born on August 8, 1989 in. to a loving family comprised of his mother Rhonda, father Lawton Ray, and a single older brother named Mark. As Trey grew older, he soon realized that he had a passion for film, and it's this very love for the craft that led to the eventual creation of his YouTube channel Lenscap Productions in September of 2006. That sounds familiar. There, Lenscap Trey posted Productions. numerous short films and skits, some even featuring his mother and brother. It was precisely a year and five days later that Trey announced he would begin shifting his channel's primary focus to another passion of his, animation specifically of the Japanese variety. From this day on, Trey Sessler would be known as Mr. Anime, Thanks one of the founding shirt. members of the anime reviewing community on YouTube, and according to many, an inspiration for similar channels to come. It's during this period when a third passion of Trey's became apparent, his love of firearms. Over the next five years, this Trey was a big gun, he, big gun guy. Review, discussing everything he knew and loved about anime, while also occasionally uploading gun-themed skits and even a few weapons demonstration videos. None this does this not look like the kind of guy that would be obsessed with guns. Fan base. Sure, he may have been a weapons enthusiast. Not even wearing a ball cap. No pickup truck. Gun violence in a 2009 rant video in which he discussed the media buzz surrounding mass shootings that were taking place in the U.S. at the time. Hey, everybody! Season two here, and today I'm ranting on something um a little bit right. Um, yes, I'm ranting on something a little bit anime unrelated. I'm ranting on all the shootings that have been. Oh, happened. boo! No I'm anime, no interest. Myself, but. Uh, 
it's uh, it, it is a little bit disturbing to know that you could be a victim in something like this at these times. All the people that were victims, you think it won't happen to me, but sometimes it does. But seriously, every day I open Yahoo, I'm like, well, time to see what today, time to see what today's shooting is, and hey, there's another one. So I don't know when it's gonna stop. I think it's why, why, but uh, what can I say? On May 13th of 2012, Trey uploaded a video titled Blank Mr. Animation soup. Job. Okay. In it, he details how he just found full-time employment for an unnamed production company. Thanks Is to this channel still up? Because I can't imagine it had these he dislikes back then. He his audience that, while well, uploads may be slowing down, that the channel was in great health, and that he had no plans of quitting YouTube anytime soon. This, unbeknownst to Trey and his fans alike, would be the last time he was seen on camera as a free man. Just one week following Trey's update, horrifying accusations sent shockwaves throughout YouTube's oh, anime man. community. That's gotta be tough. If you haven't heard, Trey Sesler, aka Mr. Anime, has been arrested for suspicion of, well, he's been arrested and charged with murdering and shooting and murdering his mother, his father, and That's gotta his be brother. tough, man. It turns out that in the I'm sure they weren't like super close if he uploaded a video talking about Trey it, right? Sessler had snapped. The murder spree began with Trey's mother, whom he lured to the garage before mercilessly firing into her chest four times, causing her to collapse in front of him. From inside the house, Trey's brother Mark began to call out, complaining about the noise. It's then when Trey swiftly made his way Fucking back into the crazy. home, passing his brother in the hallway before re-emerging from his room with a different gun and delivering two shots. Mark, although wounded, managed to crawl into the nearby bathroom and to lock the door as Trey began to make his way to their parents' bedroom. Oh, pretty though bad time for a raid, Atriox. This, this is a fucked After up story. After his father twice, Trey uh -oh. decided to retrace his You've steps, come. later friends. admitting to... Uh-oh, uh, the door maybe we switch for a minute. Shall open. Yeah, this story's kind of like actually fucked I've up. I've waiting for you, friends. Exit the Prime, I am God. I really appreciate the raid again, man. Uh, un unfortunate timing, we're, uh... We were learning about an anime reviewer turned murderer. Probably a far cry from what you were just experiencing. Yeah, this shit is this shit is heavy. Uh, we're we're all we're all big boys and girls here. We we can learn a little. Lisa, he shit wanted is nuts. to ensure that his family was in fact dead and that no one was suffering from their injuries. Trey then broke down the bathroom door and delivered the final blows to his brother who had been curled up on the floor in the fetal position. Shortly after the killings, Trey continued his rampage, tearing the house apart piece by piece and scribbling apology letters on the walls and doors, one of which read, what Why did I do this? Fuck? I love my mom, dad, and brother. Police were later sent over what to happened? the residence by Did the monster with 21 faces use him like a fleshlight or something? Forces. Trey, however, was nowhere to be found. Later that day, Trey was finally located and arrested, and it's then that even more disturbing details began to emerge. According to Trey himself, he'd been plotting a mass murder, claiming that he had plans to open fire on his old high school campus, Holy possibly shit. during a homecoming event. Other versions of his plan Here's include running meet. a car into the school's cafeteria and Boyo. or opening fire on a local festival that took place each year. Trey began to explain to officers that he had thought about these plans in great detail, and even studied the crimes of past mass murders to piece together his own perfect plan, a foolproof plot to take out as many as he possibly could, with an ultimate goal of ending at least 70 lives. He noted how each mass murder had their strengths and weaknesses, even going as far as to organize a detailed rating system based on effectiveness, this guy made a weapons tier list used, for it? and the total number of victims killed. It's because of this plan, Trey noted, that his family had to be killed. That way, they wouldn't have the burden of shame brought about by his actions. Just a few hours after killing his family, Jesus. Trey found himself in the parking lot of nearby Wallace Jr. High School, armed with an assault rifle and hundreds of rounds. This, as he put it in a later interview, was his opportunity to carry out what he had been planning for so long. Trey, however, ultimately didn't go through with his plan, later telling police it was because everything had gotten, quote, too real. 
Although Trey had been planning to commit mass murder for quite some time, the slaying of his family, however, seemed almost completely unplanned. Thanks for some laser when and questioned prime by souls police are. about Josh. whether or not Trey had Reset an argument Panda. of sorts at home Manny. before the killings, Trey said, If I would have woken up that Fuck, day man. and you would have come to me and asked, Are you going to kill your family tonight? I would have definitely said no. So far, no real motive has been established, and Trey has since pleaded guilty to his crimes and is currently serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. And the possibility of anime. How he'll never be able to forgive himself for his actions and how he feels as though he deserves to be behind bars. Before this video ends, I'd Jesus like to give Christ. a huge thank you to each and every one of my patrons. Holy as you shit. Already Mr. Anime. I don't know if I ever watched that shit. I used to be big into watching anime reviews, like, back in, like, fuck, I don't know. I mean, I still watch anime reviews, but I used to watch a fucking ton of them back in, like, I don't know, like, 2012, 2013. I don't know if I ever watched his shit, though. Yeah, that was fucking nuts, man. Yeah, I'm assuming his channel's still up, judging by the likes and dislike ratios that she was showcasing. I imagine that the channel wasn't taken down, but I still don't want to look at it. Yeah, it was a far cry from the Glico Morinaga incident, which was mainly just like an actual goofy anime episode. Well, I keep saying that, and that's pretty disrespectful considering the lead detective lit himself on fire, but I keep... Everything up until that point was just kind of goofy.